So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy L, and I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. And today, it's all about Jupiter, baby. All about Jupiter. Largest in the solar system, fifth planet from the sun. But, and I know when we talk about space and that, you never want to hear a but, you know what I'm saying? In the universe, you never want to hear a but. But, this video is titled, Something Weird is Going On with Jupiter Right Now. All right, so I don't know why it screams urgency to me, but I want to find out too. So we're going to get to this video. If you're new to the channel, man, please hit that subscribe button and join the fam. All right, and continue down this rabbit hole with us. All right, let's check it out. What if the solar system's primary gas giant, Jupiter, is sick? Consider this. You found a strange red spot the size of a tennis ball on your body. It's unclear how it appeared, and the doctors only lift their hands in dismay. Even on the internet, no one can tell what it is. Meanwhile, the spot increases and decreases, and at the same time, it's flaking. Ew. So, what's actually happening? Is this contagion preparing to disappear, or is it gradually killing you? Of course, Jupiter can't literally die from the Great Red Spot, but it can indicate some irreversible changes, the essence of which we don't... Whoa, 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 whoa! That don't look good. That don't look good at all. At all. What do we have here? comprehend. After all, the most notable feature of the largest planet in the solar system is still one of the great mysteries of physics and astronomy. In this video, you'll find out how many red spots does Jupiter actually have? How deep is this giant abscess on the planet's body? And finally, why doesn't the mysterious great red spot disappear? I don't know how many red spots Jupiter has, but that red spot that looked like it was building, gaining strength, brewing, however you want to classify it, didn't look good at all. Didn't look good at all. To make a correct diagnosis, it's essential to determine the exact date of disease onset. So when exactly was the Great Red Spot formed? This sketch was made by the Italian astronomer Giovanni Cassini in 1665. His version of the spot seems to be not very large and just dark. Whereas in the painting of the Italian painter Donato Creti, it's already in color. The ignorant public saw it as a strange sea or the top of a gigantic volcano. However, astronomers immediately realized that it was the vortex of a massive storm. But wait, if we look at old paintings and sketches, why do we see the spot located in the northern hemisphere of Jupiter instead of the southern one? No planet has storms able to cross the equator. This inconsistency made some scholars of the past think that the current Great Red Spot is the second in the last 400 years. As for the question of how the first one disappeared and this one appeared, we just missed out on it due to decades-long observation gaps. But and then if it disappeared, what damage did it do? I'll be honest, I wasn't thinking storm, but now thinking back to the way it was moving, it definitely seemed like a, a tropical storm, like a storm, like we would see. Ooh, could you imagine the destruction? We just missed out on it due to decades long observation gaps. But the answer was much simpler. Old telescopes showed an inverted image due to their optical features, and it just didn't occur to anyone to adjust it. Even in the late 19th century, the Great Red Spot was still depicted in the North. So, we're dealing with the same formation on Jupiter's gaseous body, and it appeared not later than in the mid-17th century. This makes the Great Red Spot at least a century older than the United States of America. So it's the same spot. They thought it was two different spots, but no, it, it's it's the same spot that has just been brewing. So you, you possibly could be talking about a storm that's been brewing for centuries. What? That makes it even more compelling, yet dangerous and scary at the same time. Sheesh. 
that spot at least a century older than the United States of America. Only the Voyager probe was arranged the first high quality photo shoot for the Great Red Spot in the late 1970s. By that time, astronomers noticed that the spot was slowly but surely moving along Jupiter's surface, just like any superstorm on Earth. But that analogy didn't add any clarity. Doctors always compare a new disease with the already known ones. What makes the Great Red Spot totally different from other superstorms? This terrestrial hurricane Irma, which took place in 2017, is very similar to the Great Red Spot when viewed from space. They're both even twisted the same way, counterclockwise. However, even the fiercest hurricane on Earth is almost twice as weak as the winds of the Great Red Spot. They can reach speeds of up to 650 kilometers per hour. A funnel. What I say, damage, straight, pure, just caught, just damage, bro. <laughs> Whew. And think still, how long has this been going on again? It said a century before the United States. I was just thinking a century on Earth is almost twice as weak as the winds of the Great Red Spot. They can reach speeds of up to 650 kilometers per hour. A funnel of hydrogen, ammonia, and sulfur compounds can fit one and a half Earths within all its hurricanes. But the most significant difference lies in the nature of Jupiter's storm. A typical tropical storm that hits Florida or the Mississippi is a cyclone, that is, a funnel with a central region of low atmospheric pressure. And the Great Red Spot is an anti-cyclone with high central pressure. On Earth, it would be a powerful winter storm with heavy snowfall. Indeed, in infrared images, the Great Red Spot is obviously colder than the surrounding atmosphere of Jupiter. It's just that any winter anti-cyclone on Earth typically lasts several days, not many centuries. Scientists believe that on a gas giant, it's possible due to the absence of a solid surface. After all, terrestrial storms eventually weaken when they hit land. Right. However, a similar great dark spot on Neptune lasted only five years. And on Saturn, the great white spot appears every 30 years to end up dissolving without a trace. So even the nature of the gas giants doesn't explain why the great red spot on Jupiter grew so big and didn't dissolve. Okay, now that's a that's a new monkey wrench thrown into the plans because uh, I know they didn't mention Mars, but we've been talking a lot about Mars, right? With Elon trying to get, you know, us over to Mars, get people inhabited over there in Mars, right? But have they factored in the possibility of a five year or a century long storm happening? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I know they probably thought way more than I'm just because for me, I'm just scratching the surface and they've been doing this for however many long decades even. Right. I'm just thinking about this now. So. But just to think about that now to push that to the forefront of another thing that we have to possibly think about. <laughs> you know, what I mean, like he said, we look at tropical storms once they hit land, they weaken and how long they last or they breeze past whatever state we're in, we're pretty much good to go, you know, for the most part. And we have to deal with the damage. But you're talking about something that can sustain for that long period of time? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a whole nother ball game right there. Explain why the great red spot on Jupiter grew so big and didn't dissolve. To understand what's going on with this massive formation on Jupiter's body, we have to take a closer look at it. A doctor would call the patient into the office, but we'll look at the spot from aboard the International Space Station. What external oddities of the Great Red Spot will catch our eye? You won't believe it, but over hundreds of years of observation, scientists have never understood why it's so red. It would seem that this storm is composed of exactly the same gases as the light brown Jupiter clouds. But perhaps if we got up close to it, we could see that the red spot is something like a scab on a wound. That's precisely what chemists believe. 
According to them, a giant whirlwind raises organic compounds from the depths of Jupiter into the upper atmosphere. Otherwise, those compounds wouldn't end up there. And under the influence of solar ultraviolet radiation, they form substances called tholins that have a distinctive dark red shade. And those same tholins color Pluto's planes. However, even tholins can explain why the great red spot turns pale from time to time. And that's not the only unexplained transformation it faced. In old drawings, the Great Red Spot is so enormous that it would fit three Earths in a row at once, and that's not an exaggeration. Using the Hubble telescope, we've observed the oval Great Red Spot gradually decreasing and rounding for 30 years. And at the same time, it's flaking. Fragments the size of North and South America taken together peel off from the vortex now and then. This led some scholars to suppose that the great red spot on Jupiter's body would dissolve on its own in the next 20 years. But on the contrary, the wind speeds on its edges are increasing. It does not look like a weakening storm. And to try to understand what drives it, let's dive into it. So that means it's to come back in, build out, to come back in, to build like it's breathing almost. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like it's breathing almost is possibly what it could be doing. While we're thinking, oh no, it's decreasing in size, could be disintegrating. I feel like it's breathing to come back to build stronger. And to try to understand what drives it, let's dive into its heart. What mysteries can lurk beneath the Great Red Spot? To launch the probe from our space station, we'd have to fly right over the Great Red Spot. And even hundreds of kilometers above it, we'll feel a push. This gravitational anomaly was discovered by the Juno spacecraft in 2017. As it flew over the spot, its radio signal was so distorted, it was as if it hit a tremendous gravity pocket. What this means is that there's a huge mass concentration under the surface of the Great Red Spot. It's almost as if there's another planet hiding in in the heart of Jupiter's biggest storm. But what is it really? As we descend into the red spot, the thermometer column on our probe will also turn red. The temperature will rocket from Jupiter's record-breaking cold of minus 172 degrees to the heat of 226 degrees at a depth of 220 kilometers. It's almost like the difference between liquid nitrogen and molten tin. It used to be believed that the base of the storm was somewhere here, in the shallow subsurface. However, the microwave study of Juno showed that the Great Red Spot delves at least 500 kilometers kilometers into the gas giant's atmosphere, where the temperature should be even higher. Based on Juno's data, some scientists concluded that this isn't the limit. Perhaps if we launched a well-protected probe into the Great Red Spot, the jet streams that fuel it would be detected at a depth of up to 3,000 kilometers. It turns out that the Great Red Spot is an immense overheated atmospheric engine, which for some reason doesn't lose energy for centuries. In other words, it's not just an abscess on Jupiter's body. It's a tumor that affects many tissues and feeds on its juices. So what's our gas patient waiting for? Even with our best models, it's still a medical mystery of cosmic proportions. Though we do have one intriguing clue. In the late 90s, a similar formation emerged from a few smaller vortices in Jupiter's atmosphere. NASA dubbed it the Red Spot Junior, and its development has been closely monitored since then. Who knows, maybe this newcomer will take its place when the big red tumor on the planet's body dissolves. Or do you think all Jupiter will eventually get covered in spots? Well, over the next few decades, we'll be following the history of this mysterious space disease together. First of all, he called it a space disease, right? <laughs> but at the same time, that's really, really, I don't know, like, <laughs> we're really counting on it. That one is going to disintegrate. 
I've already told you. I I don't know. I'd be hesitant to say it's it's just because it's shrinking means it's gonna disintegrate. You know what I mean? And then not only that, they threw in another monkey wrench at the end of the video to say, hey, there's another one brewing over there. You know, kind of like when it gets hurricane season here and they start popping up and you're like, all right, this is the time where, hey, I don't want to be in Florida. B, I don't want to be on a cruise. And C, I don't want to be near the Gulf. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, those are, that is those times of the year. We just have to continue to monitor Jupiter and see what is going on. And then the sheer size of them. And then what could we build? And they talked about it. He touched on it a little bit uh, to send over there and probe it and investigate and see what is taking place. What is going on? Why is this happening? What does this mean for Jupiter? You know what I mean? And why do we why are we seeing another one? So, like I said, we got to continue to monitor the next 20 years is going to be inter interesting, uh, to say the least, because of the new one spawning and the older one, you know, decreasing in size. I just, I think that's fascinating alone. So I know what I'm, I, my next 20 years is already mapped out for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. But it's going to be interesting to pay attention at, to that and see. So y'all get at me in the comment section, man, and let me know what y'all think. Shout outs to each and every one of y'all in the comment section, man. I read a long post from somebody today. I'm mad I don't have your name, bro, but you broke things down about CERN. That was pretty, pretty dope, fam. If I had your name, I'd shout you out, bro. But um, yeah, that was very, very interesting. So we definitely going to go back and touch on CERN some more. And um, yeah, and I saw the mixed reviews about how people feel about what's taking place at CERN. So the conversation has started. Well, it's been started. I'm just talking about within our, this community that we're creating. So the conversation has started here, man. And uh, I like it. I like where it's going. So y'all get at me. Leave a like, share the video, subscribe, and stick around and stay tuned, man. Until the next one, I'm gone. Peace.